Uh, let me pull up my second file. This is a uh, nut, the Nutcracker, uh, and oh, just a while ago I, I got the music and just played around and made kind of a recreation from the actual score. Um, so if you if you have an instrument that's kind of too loud and you wanna you wanna quiet it, uh, this is what we're gonna be able to do. Okay, so let's say let's say I think I, I want the clarinet to be louder. So this is the volume knob right here. I can turn that up, and here we go. Okay, this is the volume for all the. This is the track information. As I move down, you can see the track information changing. This on the right is the uh, the ge the uh, overall master volume. For it's called output one and two. Um, if I press X, that will give me the mixer, so I can see it in a mixer format. I can see all the all the uh, the channels and all their volumes and things. The circular thing is called the pan. That is your left and right uh, feature. Um, so here's the output one and two. Here's the Here's the one that I'm clicking on. Um, so this is great if I want to, you know, change the volume for one spot for the whole for the whole track for the whole song. But what if for like a certain spot I want to change, um, you know, I want to I want to move the volume just for a couple seconds or so, and then I want to put it back. For example, I think the vo the cello is a little bit too loud, so I want to bring them down. Okay. In order to do that, I press A. And that will show me all of the volumes. Now, what I can do here is I can make points just like the tempo. And I can say, OK, I want you to get quieter in this section. Now, these are from dBs. These are decibels. So I'll say I want you to be quieter four decibels. And it goes back. Um, if it press A it comes back. If I press Z, that would be a uh, zoom for the track. So if I press A and Z, then a, a little bit I can see a little bit better. Um, um, so so if I want to change this automation, and, I, and let, let me let me try this. Let me go to the violins. I'll solo this so you can hear it. Okay, now I can change this, you know, however I want. This is really great. Um, let me undo all those. I can do it with my mouse, or there's a couple other ways I can do it. I can do it if I use the um, if I use the marquee tool here, press and uh, press the command, highlight a section, and then click, drag, click and drag up and down. That's another handy way of doing this. I don't have to do one, two, three, four clicks. I just do that, and it's really fast. Um, if I okay, let's say I make uh, if I make this higher, and I want to move it down or something, or move it to the right. If I hold down Shift and highlight this section, now I can move this over, or I can move this down, or I can move it up. It's very, very useful. Um, I can also, if I press and hold Option, click and drag, then I can make a copy of that automation. Um, and let's say, let's say, okay, I've made this. Another really handy dandy thing is to use the automation curve tool. Now I press command. I can make curves now instead of just straight lines. And that could be really, really handy. Okay. Um, I can also draw in my own automation. All I got to use is use the pencil tool, press two. Now I can quickly or slowly draw the automation that I want to happen. Um, and the third tool is using controllers. Um, uh, controllers are MIDI controllers that. It, it could be a knob, it can be 
it can be a fader, it could be a slider, you know, um, your mod wheel on the left, those are, those are controllers. Um, and so you can control, what, what, what I want to do here is I want to control this automation with the mod wheel. In this case, I'm going to use the mod wheel. Um, all I have to do is I press Command L and I get this box. Uh, what do I do is I, is I move the mod wheel, just move it at all, and, and click on what I want what I want to move. So I, I'm clicking on this. I want to say, okay, I want you to be assigned. And then I move the mod wheel, and then it learns it. You can delete these if you want. Um, and then when you're done, make sure you unclick the learn mode because any buttons that you press, it's going to say, okay, I want, I'm gonna, I'm going to affect those with a controller. So make sure this is unclicked. So now it has learned when I move the mod wheel. Oh, let me get rid of this. When I move the mod wheel, this automation is moving. So as this thing, as this music is moving along, I can move this. those violins and make them louder and softer um, so this is this is a really really great tool two things you want to you want to think about when trying to make realistic orchestral sounds especially with strings there's a volume and there's timbre um, volume is pretty obvious uh, when you listen to, to string swelling just all the time you listen to strings they're always coming in and out in, in terms of swelling and their timbre is doing the same thing timbre is just you know, when someone plays louder, it sounds more intense. Um, it could be sound with a trumpet, it's more blatty. With the, you know, with a violin, it's more, just more intense. So those are the two things you want to think about. Uh, right here, we're not we're not affecting the timbre; we're just affecting the volume. But just affecting one of those two things can have a really good difference. Um, when you're using the east-west samples, those actually affect. There there are instruments called DXF uh, mod wheels instruments. And with the mod wheel, you affect both the volume and the timbre at the same time. So that's exactly what you want. Um, you want to be able to, when you're making realistic uh, string samples, be able to either play them, play, you know, with your right hand playing the, 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 the notes that you're playing, and then the left hand playing the mod wheel at the same time, or just playing one of the two, or just playing the notes, and then going back after and affecting it with the mod wheel. And that's how you get very realistic. Um, sounds because you really control what the strings sound like and how they sound real. So we're just going to be talking. We're just going to be affecting the volume, but it should hopefully make a big difference. Now, what I wanted to do. I mean, this is this, this is moving around, but I want to be able to record this. So in order to record this, I go to either touch or latch. I will go to touch. Do not go to right, uh, because right, it will record everything, but it will also delete everything that's that's. For example, you'll see this later on, but I can not only record, here, let me show you. I can not only change the volume, but I can change the pan. And later on, in another tutorial I'll talk about, you can change the effects. So there's all kinds of lines that you can be having here. And if you use the right, it will delete all those other lines. For I mean, it, it would just delete them. And it's kind of a dumb feature, but that's what happens. So make sure that you only use touch or latch, same thing, um, and it will only affect the volume or whatever you're currently on. Okay, so let's go to, um, we'll go to the beginning and as I move this, it will just record all my movements. So here we go. done make sure that you go to the read because now uh, it won't it won't be recording any more of your information you don't have to worry about that okay um, that made it sound a little more re realistic and I only worked on the first violins if I did that for all the strings and maybe even all the instruments if I had to 
uh, I think it would get you get that whole that unison swelling motion that that is in the actual song. So that could be very very useful, especially with strings and especially if you're doing something that's a little bit slower, more expressive, or you know, without that feature, it just does not sound the same. Um, so with this feature, you can really control the timing of the swelling and, and how much it is. It's a really great feature. Okay, let's talk about some other things. There's the pitch. I'll go back to here. Like I said before, I click. Uh, let's go to a different one. Um, <coughs> let's go to the French horns. Click on the pan. The pan is this this little knob right here. Um, <coughs> when it's negative, it's left. When it's positive, it's right. Uh, pan can work the same way. I can automate the pan. I can move it around. I can make as many points as I want. Let's just have a listen to the French horns. So hopefully you can see, especially right here, how, how it changes sides. It goes from left to right. Um, but I can do the, all the same exact things. I use my pencil tool to change it. Um, all that great stuff. Um, let's go to the piano roll. Now, from here, you, you open up the, um, this is called the hyperdraw. Uh, this is, these are the velocities. You can see, you can move them up and down. You can use your normal way. You can see how they move up and down. Uh, these are no velocities. You can also look at the pitch band if you're using a pitch wheel. Uh, most of these I don't actually use, but a few of them I do. Volume is a volume that works the same way as the auto, as the uh, um, track volume but you you want to make sure that you don't use both at the same time i don't i don't really understand why you need to have two at the same time but if you if you're using if like if if you use one of the two and the other one is constant then it's fine but if you have both region automation here here and track automation going at the same time logic will spaz out because it'll, it'll be trying to go between it will try and follow two orders and it will just it'll be a mess uh, so make sure you only use one at a time. I believe, however, that if you use multi-timbral instruments, uh, you want to use this region automation because if you use track automation, multi-timbral instruments have one track with many MIDI instruments, and all the MIDI instruments will be affected. All the MIDI channels will be affected. But if you use region automation, only that region will be affected, and the rest of the uh, of the of the uh, tracks on the MIDI channels will not be affected. So you've got volume, region volume, you've got pan also. Um, and like we said before, you have the sustain pedal. There's no sustain pedal played here, but you have that on and off function uh, if you ever need it. Um, OK, let's see. OK, the last thing is just how to work the colors. Um, if you want, if you press Option C, then you get this little thing, and uh, you can just click and click and click the colors you want. Uh, this also works with markers. If I make a marker here, hello, make a marker here, then I can click and and uh, change the colors. I'm gonna press G. They're still there. Um, so this is really useful, especially when you get lots of tracks. Um, seeing lots of green, empty, normal default regions can get kind of confusing, especially when you have lots and lots of regions, I even audio regions. Uh, you have to you have to color code them to keep track of where things are. Um, but that's how you use the colors, um, and that is the end of our first or our second tutorial. I uh, hope you watch the next one. The next one we're going to talk about all the instruments and all their features. And then the next one after that, we're going to talk about all the effects, and that should that should do it. So I hope that you uh, understood and this helped you out. Okay, bye bye.